Hey guys, Lewis here, and welcome to Analysis of Thrones. In this video, we will be analyzing the Rain Tarback Rebellion. This rebellion took place about 35 years before the start of the events in A Game of Thrones, but it's highlighted many times throughout the show and book series. The events of the rebellion are immortalized in Westeros through the song, The Reigns of Castamere. We will analyze the background, major players, tactics, and events behind the song, and get to the heart of why Tywin Lannister is one of the most feared men in all of Westeros. spoke that Lord of Castamere, but now the rain we pour is all with no one there to hear. Yes, now the rain we pour is all and not a soul to hear. Good boy. This clip displays several times that the reigns of Castamere is played throughout the show. The song itself inspires pride in the hearts of Lannister men and fear in others. It is a song about the destruction of House Rain and House Tarback at the hands of Tywin after they rebelled against House Lannister. To start our analysis, we will look into the events that led up to the rebellion. The main houses that were a part of the rebellion were House Tarback of Tarback Hall and House Rain of Castamere. These were two vassal houses of the Westerlands, in service to their liege house, Lannister. A little over 20 years before the rebellion started, Tytos Lannister, whose father to Tywin, became the lord of House Lannister. Tytos was the third son of Gerald Lannister, and did not grow up believing that he would be lord of Casterly Rock. After both his brothers died in battle, Tytos started to be groomed for lordship. Tytos did not have the right temperament to be a strong leader, and was viewed by many as weak. Lady Ellen of House Rain is another major figure in the lead up to the rebellion. She was an ambitious woman who planned to become Lady of Casterly Rock. She was betrothed to Tytos' older brother, Tywald, who was heir to House Lannister. He was slain in battle and she then married the next in line, Tion Lannister. Before Tion became lord, he too was killed and Elaine was once again denied her spot as Lady of Casterly Rock. She then tried to seduce Tytos, who was already married to Jane Marbrand. This move forced the Lannisters to marry her off so she would leave Casterly Rock. Ellen Rain was wed to Walder and Tarbeck, the Lord of House Tarbeck. This marriage was the start of the connection between the Houses Rain and House Tarbeck that would bear fruit of rebellion in years to come. A few years after Ellen and Walderin were wed, Gerald Lannister died and Tytos became lord. Tytos was a very kind, trusting, and overly accommodating man. In turn, this made him very weak lord. He had a reputation of loaning gold to those who asked and didn't really look to make sure that they repaid him. People knew this and took advantage of it. House Rain and House Tarbeck were among those to take the gold from the amiable leader. Under Tytos' rule, House Lannister was seen as almost a joke to its vassal lords. People would joke and call them the Toothless Lions. Many would insult them in the presence of Tytos, and he would do nothing but laugh with them. This infuriated Tywin, who was Tytos' eldest son. Tywin was the complete opposite of his father. While his father stayed at Casterly Rock, Tywin led the forces in the War of the Nine Penny Kings. When Tywin returned from the war, he was determined to make House Lannister a house that was feared and respected once again. Tywin began this effort while his father was still lord. His first action was to declare that everyone had to repay the loans that his father gave out. If they couldn't, they needed to send hostages to be kept until the debt was paid. Lord Roger of House Rain completely ignored the order and even laughed at it. Lord Walder and Tarback rode to Casterly Rock to talk to Lord Tytos and try to convince him to forget the debt. Once Lord Walder and made it to the rock, though, Tywin immediately had him thrown into prison. Lord Walderin's wife, Ellen, responded by capturing three Lannisters. 
They declared that if Wal Lord Waldron was not returned, then they would harm the prisoners. Tywin wanted to send Waldron back to Tarbeck Hall in three pieces, one for each captured Lannister. But his father forbade it and released Lord Waldron, apologized to him, and removed any debt they owed. About a year later, Tywin was still furious about the slight against the Lannister name. He decided to completely ignore his father and take matters into his own hands. He sent ravens to House Tarbeck and House Rain, declaring that they come to Casterly Rock and be punished for the crimes against their liege house. House Tarbeck and House Rain responded with rebellion. This move was exactly what Tywin wanted, and he now had his reason to engage the unloyal houses in war. The Rain Tarbeck Rebellion officially began in 261 AC. Tywin marched from Castle Rock straight to Tarbeck Hall with 3,000 crossbowmen and man at arms, and 500 knights. He was joined by about 4,500 troops from House Marbrand, House Prestor, and, and several other lesser houses. Lord Walder and Tarbeck got word of the approaching army, but was unable to gather the majority of his forces because Tywin and his army were closing in fast. Waldron decided to ride out and meet him with just his household knights. We do not have the specific number, but it was significantly less than Tywin's force. The greater numbers of the Lannisters completely overwhelmed the Tarbeck force. The battle was a massacre and all the Tarbeck force were either killed or captured. After the battle, Lord Waldron expected that him and his sons would be ransomed. Instead, Tywin took the heads off Lord Waldron, his son, and anyone of Tarbeck blood. From there, Tywin marched on towards Tarbeck Hall. Lady Ellen sent a raven to Castamere, calling for her brothers to get an army and come save her and the Tarbecks from the wrath of the Lannisters. She believed that the walls of Tarbeck Hall could withstand Tywin's force long enough for the rain army riding from Castamere to arrive. When Tywin and his army finally arrived to Tarbeck Hall, Elaine saw decapitated heads of her husband, stepsons, and other Tarbecks stuck on top of spears with a large force following. Ellen went to stay in the main hall during the siege while she waited for her brother Lord Roger Rain and his army to arrive. Tywin had his men build siege engines and they finished them within a day. They then hurled boulders at the city and hit the main keep, bringing it down. Elaine and her son Tion were hiding in the keep and were killed in the destruction. Once this happened, the defending force surrendered and the gates opened. Tywin forced Ellen's daughters to join the Silent Sisters. The one remaining son, who was three years old and the last Lord of Tarbeck, disappeared before the Lannisters got him. Sources differ on what happened to the child. Some say that he was tossed down a well by Sir Armory Larch, while others say he was smuggled to Essos and is currently a bard. Tywin then lit Tarbeck Hall on fire and the castle burned for a whole day before it was reduced to black burnt shell of itself. Lord Roger Rain was able to muster a force of 2,000 cavalry and arrived at Tarbeck Hall while it was still ablaze. He arrived unannounced to the Lannister army. While his men and horse were tired, he decided it was the right time to attack, while they still had the element of surprise. They fell on the Lannister camp and had some initial success. The Rains did not have heavy cavalry and found it difficult to make their way to Tywin's position. The force that Lord Rain brought to Tarbeck Hall was made mostly of light cavalry. The difference between light and heavy cavalry starts at the roles each of them serve on the battlefield. Light cavalry is a type of military unit that can be used in a wide range of roles. Firstly, they are used as scouts and outriders during an army's march. They typically use faster horses with more endurance. The horse and the riders will typically be lightly armored, if at all. The speed and endurance allows them to quickly scout enemy positions and chase down any enemy scouts. On the battlefield, light cavalry serve several roles. They cannot charge into a well-formed line of enemy units because of the type of armor and weapons used with the cavalry. They are typically armed with bows and swords. One role they serve is to lock enemy units in position. They engage certain groups of enemies and force them to stand their ground. This allows a commander to use that to their advantage and move infantry, archers, or heavy cavalry to engage those force. Light cavalry is also very useful when an enemy is retreating. If a commander decides to rush an opposing force in retreat, light cavalry are perfect for chasing fleeing enemies and cutting them down in the escape. Heavy cavalry serve a much different role. 
they are used to tear through enemy lines and engage them directly. To do this effectively, the horse and rider are often heavily armored. The rider's first weapon is typically a lance. This is perfect when first charging into an enemy position. The length and the strength of the lance, backed by the speed of the horse, can blow back men and cause massive damage to a line. Next, the rider will use weapons like a longsword or mace to attack the enemies. In medieval time periods, heavy cavalry riders could be wearing full plate armor, and the horse would too have some type of armor on. When the rider would engage foot soldiers with his sword or mace, they had a great advantage due to the armor. The heavy cavalry were equivalent to a tank on the battlefield. They could do massive damage to enemy infantry while being very tough to kill. This is probably the case on battlefields in Westeros. The problem with heavy cavalry is that with the heavy weight of the armors and weapons, the horse do not have much endurance. They would start an attack at a slow trot. As they approached, they would pick up speed until they were finally close enough to the enemy to start the full charge. The reason Lord Roger Rain was most likely on light cavalry at Tarbeck Hall was because he was in a rush to get to the castle as fast as he could, to try and save the castle and his sister before Tywin could get to them. Unfortunately for them, Tywin had already taken out the castle and set it ablaze. Lord Rain decided to attack right away and not wait for reinforcements because he had the element of surprise on his hand. He charged the Lannister encampment, and the surprise attack had worked in the beginning. The best chance of victory for the Rains were if they made their way toward Tywin's location and cut the head off the army. Because Lord Rain had no heavy cavalry, he was unable to reach his position. Eventually, Tywin was able to organize a force and start a counterattack. The Lannisters had greater numbers and turned the battle in his favor. Lord Roger Rain saw the battle was lost and had his men retreat. But by that time, half of the 2,000 Rain army were dead, and the other half made a hasty retreat back to Castamere. Lord Roger was hit with a crossbow bolt and was badly wounded. Roger Rain was so weakened by the bolt that he had to be carried back to Castamere. Once back to, at Castamere, Roger's brother Reynard took control of the defense due to his brother's weakened state. I created this map of a layout of Castamere to be able to show the events that happened here. We do not get very specific details about the castle, so it's probably not completely accurate. But it does show the elements we do know about, and it provides a base for us to discuss the events which happened here. Castamere was named after a pool of water near its location. There was a stream that flowed from the pool. Like Casterly Rock, Castamere started as a mine. The gold and silver mines there made the Rains almost equally rich as the Lannister during the Age of Heroes. The Rains built halls and keeps within the walls. Once the mines were cleared, the Rains widened the passageways and made them into great halls, ballrooms, galleries, and bedchambers. Nine tenths of Castamere was underground. Reynard Rain ordered that the exterior portion of the castle to be abandoned, and everyone make their way into the deep underground passageways and halls. Tywin arrived three days after the burning of Tarbeck Hall. Along the way, Tywin picked up about 4,000 extra men from House Bannefort, Westerling, Plum, and Stackspear. Tywin's force now numbered in total about 8,000 men. The Reigns had almost no chance to defeat Tywin, and Raynard decided to send terms for an agreement. He declared that he would bend the knee and become loyal to the Lannisters once again, but requested that Tywin's brothers stay at Castamere as hostages. Tywin decided to instead close all the entrances to the mines. He had his men use picks and shovels to fill the entrances with earth and rubble. They did this and all ways in and out of the subterranean halls were blocked and no man could pass. He then ordered that the nearby stream be dammed. The men started digging to redirect the flow of water into the closest mine entrance. This tactic of redirecting water supplies as a weapon can be seen in real world history. In about 143 BC, the Romans were at war in Spain. The Spanish were encamped in a plain alongside a stream. Lucius Metellus had his men dam the stream and the Spanish encampment flooded. The Spanish were forced to make their way to higher ground where the Romans had set up an ambush. The Spanish were slaughtered and the Romans were victorious. 
This idea of using a stream as a weapon is very similar to what Tywin used. Three days after Tywin ordered the stream to be redirected, the task was complete and the water was flowing to the entrance of Castamere Mines and finding its way through cracks into the hall. Lannister men claimed to hear screams of people inside as the hall filled with water. Eventually those screams stopped. No one made it out of the mines and the rubble was never cleared. Tywin put the exterior portion of the castle to torch. The once great castle of Castamere was completely destroyed and House Rain died with it. There was a number of things that came as a result of the Rain Tarback Rebellion. First was the utter destruction of two old and powerful houses of the Westerlands. The Rains in particular were almost as wealthy as the Lannisters themselves. At the time of the rebellion, the Rains saw the Lannisters as a weakened house, one that could, they could stand up to. This view of the Lannisters being weak had roots in reality. Tywin's father, Tytos, was a kind but weak-willed man. Many other houses shared a similar view to that of the Rains. This view was ended the moment Tywin destroyed Tarbeck Hall and Castamere. A second result of the rebellion was the re-establishment of the Lannisters being a house that was respected and feared. The utter destruction showed the rest of the Westerland lords what would be the outcome if they decided to stand against their liege lords. A third result from the rebellion is the solidification of Tywin Lannister as a man to be feared. Prior to the rebellion, Tywin already had a reputation of being an extremely serious man who was never seen smiling. He also already showed his ability to lead men in the battle during the War of the Five Penny Kings, but the Rain Tarback Rebellion established him as one of the most feared men in Westeros. The songs The Reign of Castamere's was written about the Lannisters' destruction of House Tarback and House Rain. The song begins by showing the arrogance and pride of the rebellious Red Lions of Castamere. The song then goes into how none of those men are alive and their ancestral home of Castamere is a ruin. The song is a source of pride for Lannister men and a source of fear for those who would oppose them. A few years after the Rain Tarback Rebellion, Lord Farman of Fair Castle grew unruly against the Lannisters. Lord Farman was aggressively defiant and it looked like another rebellion was at hand. Tywin sent a lute to Fair Castle and in front of Lord Farman he played the Raidens of Castamere's. The song alone was enough to scare Lord Farman into submitting to Tywin. This shows the impact that the Rain Tarbeck Rebellion had on the minds of Tywin's vassals and anyone who would stand against him. The Rain Tarbeck Rebellion shows us a great deal about the character of Tywin Lannister. He was a man obsessed with the standing and legacy of his family. He was infuriated by the state in which the Lannister name was weakened during his father's reign. He personally took on the task of re-establishing the strength of House Lannister. This rebellion shows the extent Tywin would go to establish and maintain his family's strong name. The destruction of Castamere also shows Tywin's tactical intelligence. The rains were severely outnumbered, but a storming of the underground castle would be bloody. The rains knew the castle better than Tywin could ever hope to. To march into there would give the rains the advantage of choosing spots to ambush the invaders. The rains also had sufficient food supplies to wait out a long siege. Tywin's redirection of the river destroyed the rains with zero casualties. This shows Tywin's tactical prowess. The rebellion also shows the ruthlessness Tywin was capable of. He beheaded men who had surrendered, marched with their heads on spikes, burned their home to the ground, and ended their family's line. He showed what lengths he was willing to go to achieve his ends. He displayed this ruthlessness again many times, such as the sack of King's Landing during Robert's Rebellion and at the Red Wedding. Many would see his acts as evil, but those measures made the Lannisters powerful again and remain strong through his reign as Lord. Okay guys, that's it for the analysis of the Rain Tarback Rebellion. If you enjoyed this, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the video. I would also love to hear what you guys thought of Tywin as a leader and about the whole events that happened during the rebellion. So please comment and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.